Hello there. You're watching VLAN Miniatures. I'm currently running a Kickstarter campaign with four unique fantasy characters sculpted by me. This is uh, one of the characters that I've sculpted, a knight riding a giant snail. And here is a resin version that I have painted. I really like this design and thought that something similar would fit into the universe of Turnip 28. So in this episode, I'm going to turn one of the resin casts that I have of this character into a Turnip 28 miniature. The Turnip 28 characters often have pieces of medieval looking armor, so I think this is a very good base for what I have in mind. Uh, so the type of base that this one has got, a very organic looking base that I think is very nice. However, I want my uh, bases to match the bases for the same project. So the first thing to do is to mount this one on a regular gaming base. The first thing I want to do is to find a new head for the beast. And of course, this head will probably find its way onto another project. I found this dry piece of uh, polymer clay, which is just, yeah, it's just a blob. A little bean shape of, uh, of clay, and I think that might be a good uh, start of a head shape. A little bean head. I think I want some uh, the head to kind of turn into a, a root of some kind, so I want something to be hanging down uh, from the tip. Maybe these cable entrails from the Nurgle Terminators might be good. I added a tiny piece of uh, dried clay to the tail as well, because the elongated head made it look a little bit unbalanced when I only made it longer on one side, so yeah. I want to add some more bits and I want to focus a little bit on the rider. Uh, the rider is small, actually much smaller than a 28mm figure. Uh, I have this uh, Perry Miniatures rifle, which I think will fit quite nice, but the hands are a little bit big. I think it's going to work anyway, because I can just paint it as uh, large gloves. But then I will need to remove the rider's hands and maybe the lower part of the arm as well. Just having the hands hold the gun and no arms look so very very weird so yeah we need to sculpt some arms and while i'm at it i'm going to uh, make quite a lot of green stuff so i can also cover the new tail and the head i think i'm going to have to do the arms in uh, two takes because uh, yeah first i need to shape out the arms and then add some details I will come in and carve this uh, and add details when it's dry. But for now, I just want the correct length and shape of the arm. So first, I think I just want the cables or like the tentacles to come out of a kind of hole in the head, like a nasty mouth with tentacles hanging out and from that I think I just want the body to be kind of organic and segmented so a little bit like the design I have here some shapes like this first and then smooth it out later I'm going to simulate some skin texture and also just uh, push the clay more together uh, using a stiff old brush. The new pieces don't really match the original body because I sculpted that much smoother and yeah spent a lot more time on it than what I'm doing here so to make sort of a transition I think I can add some extra details. So I'm going to add some uh, kitchen uh, thread or kitchen string to, uh, to the new pieces. Kind of if the creature is tightly wrapped with uh, with ropes, its blood might not uh, flow as smoothly as it did and it might get bloated in some areas. So I'm not trying to add this too tightly because as the green stuff is still soft, I am going to, uh, yeah, as you can see here, I'm going to 
make like an um, indent into the putty. So I don't want to ruin what I just sculpted, but I kind of want to push it in there so it gets this uh, this look so that you can see that it's folded over over the pieces. And I can also try to exaggerate uh, where the thread or where the skin meets the thread. Like here, try to push it out. Like on this side, it looks quite good. So what I have to do now is just to seal the kitchen thread in place using some watered down Mod Podge. The green stuffing on this one is done, but I think I want to add some more details here and there. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going for yet, but I have this uh, old piece of uh, balsa wood, which is really weathered and has a very nice texture. So I thought maybe I could add some uh, random planks to, uh, yeah, to my snail rider. And it's easy to split them uh, like this. So I think I'm just going to add some planks around on the, on the shell. The last thing to do before painting is to add a little bit of texture to the base. And as I usually do, I'm just going to use some uh, Mod Podge and dirt from the garden. And there we have it, with some simple kit bashing and adding some details. I turned this character from the Caves and Creeps Kickstarter into a Turnip 28 miniature. After a quick prime of black and then white from above, the miniature is ready for paint. I want to use mainly earthy tones for my uh, turnip uh, project, so I want to use brown, beige and maybe a little bit of green on this one. Now I'm going to use some pale green, uh, some uh, pinkish uh, skin color and the flayed one's flesh, even lighter, more of a bony color I think just to have some color variations here and there. I'm going to do this on the skin and also on the shell. But on the shell I'm going to follow the lines of the texture. So I want to make some kind of pattern onto the shell using this uh, using these colors. The colors are not that different from each other, so it's going to be a very subtle pattern, but I still think it's going to be visible when I, yeah, after I've done the dry brushing and washes and such. I want a natural looking pattern on the snail shell, so I'm going to achieve this by just applying some lines with Agrax Earthshade and some other washes. To start, I think I'm just going to add some stripes following the natural texture of the shell. I've built up the stripes of Agrax Earthshade with a few layers, and now I think this shell is starting to look quite... Oops. And now I think this shell is starting to look quite snail shell-like. I've used the same tones for the snail and the shell, so I think I want the snail to be a little bit lighter to... Uh, make them stand apart even more. So I'm going to dry brush and stipple a little bit of white onto the snail. Or yeah, maybe pure white is a bit too much, so let's grab some of the flesh color as well. And while I'm at it, I might as well also dry brush the planks. I'm also using a little bit of white to dry brush the shell from above. This is a very dry brush because I don't want to cover up the pattern that I've done, uh, but I still think it should be a little lighter on the, on the top. And it's also nice to uh, really bring out these, uh, this organic structure. I added a few more shades to the shell, gradually building up this uh, pattern using some sepia, green, and Agrax Earthshade shades. I see now that uh, it's a little bit shiny and thick in some places, and that's probably because I didn't shake the green wash enough. 
Uh, so I might have to come in and fix this, although it is a snail, so it doesn't matter that much if it's a bit shiny. I painted all the metal areas and also the base with brown, as it's going to be a good base layer for the metallics. I'm going to paint the metals with dry brushing and stippling, and I'm going to use yeah, just these two paints on top of the brown. But I want some of the brown to be uh, visible in the recesses. So I'm going to do a very light dry brush. Before washing the metals, I uh, quickly painted the last details that I hadn't done yet, like the saddle and the axe handle and yeah, the sleeves and all that. And I used the same tones as I did on the snail and the shell, because as I mentioned, I want this one to be kind of simple and use few colors to have it in kind of a yeah sad and gray brown environment, not too many colors. Uh, and yeah, the reason why I did this is because I want to wash everything in the same time. And I'm going to uh, wash the metals and uh, everything I painted now with both sepia and green. Maybe trying to vary a little bit where I put them down. When applying a contrast paint, I can let the um, paint flow a little bit on each side of the rope, creating a shadow and also a transition between yeah, for example here, the skin of the snail and the rope. I'm still a little bit uncertain on what to do uh, with these uh, tentacles or cables or yeah, whatever is hanging from its mouth. Um, I was thinking about not adding any colors or any spot colors, but it looks a little bit, might look a little bit boring. So I think I'm going to try to add a little bit of blue in that area just to maybe just a light blue glaze towards the mouth. The hint of blue uh, really helped the miniature come together. So I also decided to yeah, just add it uh, here and there on the entire snail body, especially around uh, the ropes and a little bit here and there in the cracks. I think I'm going to start out by just dry brushing a little bit of the pale pale green and um, desert sand colors that I used on the beast as well. I'm going to start with a very, very high contrast. So to begin with, I'm actually going to dry brush uh, a layer of white as well. And the reason why I've chosen to go this light with the highlight is that I'm going to use brown contrast paints uh, to make the base look muddy. The mud is looking nice, but the transition between the snail and the ground is a little bit too sharp. I mean, the snail would probably drag some mud and dirt along with it, so I want a little bit of, uh, of a transition. Um, yeah, let's just try to splash some brown onto the lower part of the snail. All right, that works quite well. Let's try on the snail. Okay, it's very easy to do too much of this, so. All right, I think that looks a little bit better. And with a black base rim, my Turnip 28 Snail Rider is finished. Let me know what you think in the comments below and follow the link in the description to find the Kickstarter. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I will see you all in the next episode.